a lot of interesting choices for opponents coming up in the in the coming months and years. At middleweight, Arthur Abraham is the most obvious example. At super middleweight, Mikkel Kessler. It's going to be fun finding out, Jim. Indeed, uh, Pavlik could fight at either 160 or 168. And the stringy middleweight, not surprisingly, has said that somewhere down the road, maybe he'd like to fight as a heavyweight. If so, he enters into a hall of mirrors. As Lennox Lewis, I mentioned that belt collection game in which both Klitschko and Ibrahimov are engaged at this moment. Very quickly, let's look at the four fighters who hold heavyweight title belts. And we do not mean to suggest by showing you this list that just because they hold a heavyweight title belt, they are necessarily one of the top four fighters in the division. This is simply the identity mix through which somebody has to churn his way to become the star in heavyweight boxing. Vladimir Klitschko has been seeking that identity for quite some time. He looms as the number one candidate. Lennox, Sultan Abragamov is a small southpaw mover heavyweight. Now, uh, there's a good precedent for Klitschko here. He batted Chris Bird around the ring like a shuttlecock twice. But on the other hand, the smaller southpaw Ruslan Shigayev upended 7-foot, 323-pound Russian Nikolai Volouev last year. Should Vladimir Klitschko be worried about the style of Sultan Ibrahimov? Hard time catching up with him because Ibrahimov is a KG type of boxer. He moves well. Plus, he's a small heavyweight. I see Klitschko as a great right hand. Great jab, great uppercut, great movement, great speed. And he's going to be a hard to beat. He's got the weight on his size. He's got the size on his side. So, and he throws a great right hand, as you can see against Chris Bird. So he's used to these type of opponents. And uh, it won't take him long to catch up with a Bargamoff. But it may be a good fight. We have to see. All right. Well, let's quickly take a look at the tail of the tape between Klitschko and Ibrahimov, and it reveals that both of them appear to be emphasizing quickness in their approach to this fight as Klitschko weighed in at an unusually light 238, and Ibrahimov's low uh, weight of 219 is also relatively low for him. He's been as high as 221, 225 in previous fights. An arm length advantage of only one inch for Klitschko, despite the height advantage listed here as four inches, may show up bigger in the ring. They're both functionally in their prime as heavyweights, 31, 32 years old. That's when you ought to be about at your best if you're a big man fighter. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Vladimir Klitschko, Sultan Bragamore fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. Case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! All right, Harold, and with a garden crowd heavily populated by Ukrainian Americans and Russian Americans, there's a plan for pageantry here. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the ring first, representing the WBO, the undefeated. Sultan Ibrahimo.
He's supposed to learn as amateur. He's supposed to have gotten rid of that right now. Now he's a professional, a true professional and seasoned. And now making his entrance, representing the IBF and the IBO, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Klitschko. Is he also the best fighter in the division? Lennox, his detractors love to focus on the three embarrassing knockouts at the hands of Ross Purity, Corey Sanders, and Lehman Brewster. A part of the argument in defense of Klitschko is every heavyweight is subject to that in a division where everybody can hit hard. What's right? Is his weak chin truly a debilitator, or is he just like other heavyweights in that regard? I would say it's just like every other way it's in that regard. Once you have a guy over 200 pounds, he can hit hard. And once he hits you on the chin, you're going to go down. Doesn't matter how good you are. But this has always been the question surrounding heavyweight, especially me. You know, oh, does he have a great chin? Well, he's shown that his chin has been suspect for a little while. Now he's proven that he's got a great chin. He's gotten over that. And this is what we're going to have to see in the next coming up rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the mecca of sports and entertainment, Madison Square Garden, New York City, USA. Tonight, we are gathered here for the very first heavyweight title unification fight of the 21st century, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. The ultimate goal is the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world and it's all brought to you by k2 promotions and seminal warriors boxing in association with hbo rtl madison square garden and the seminal tribe of florida sponsored by nemirov sanctioned by the new york state athletic commission chairman ron scott stevens commissioner melvina lathan deputy commissioner mike pascal also sanctioned by the IBF President Marion Mohammed, the WBO President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, and the IBO President Ed Levine. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system, Don Ackerman, Chuck Jampa, and Steve Weisfeld. And inside the ring, the man in charge of the action at the bell, referee Wayne Kelly. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, Wearing red with silver, official weight, 219 pounds. This Olympic silver medalist now has an unbeaten professional record of 22 victories, including 18 knockouts with one contest even. From Dagestan, Russia, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Sultan. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trimmed with gold, official weight 238 pounds. An Olympic gold medalist who now has a record as a professional consisting of 49 victories, including 44 knockouts against three defeats. From Kiev, Ukraine, the reigning and defending 
IBF, IBO, and two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Hitchko. Center of the ring. Sultan, Vladimir, we're boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, come out boxing at the bell. Good luck, 12 rounds. There hasn't been a universally recognized heavyweight champion of the world since the man sitting next to me, Lennox Lewis, retired. A lot of people think Vladimir already deserves that distinction. He's been dispatching top 10 guy after top 10 guy. That's Ibragamov. His mission here, dispatch Ibragamov. Referee Wayne Kelly was also the referee for Klitschko's destruction of Chris Bird in Germany a year and a half ago. Klitschko immediately starts trying to knock down Ibragamov's right hand as Ibragamov sticks it out to jab. What about that tactic, Lennox? Well, it's a, it's a good tactic to a certain degree, but you have to be careful because Klitschko's coming down with a lot of power behind that, be, behind that jab, trying to knock it down. What I would do is hold my hand out and let him knock it down and come across with a, a right hook which Abragamov is might even try right now. Given that Abragamov is a much shorter southpaw, how viable is it going to be for Vladimir Klitschko to use the time-honored tactic of leading with straight right hands against him? Well, I think he's going to try a couple uh, straight right hands and obviously come back with the hook. I'm sure Manny's going to tell him that. But this is, you know, the first round he's going to be warmed up, warming up. He's going to check out Abragamov and see what he... See, see what he can tell from just even doing this, throwing out a jab. What he should be doing is throwing more jabs, even starting with a, a couple of double jabs. And not really worried about his uh, Bragamoff's right hand at the moment. He should so try. Far, and... So far, Klitschko remains intent on knocking Ibragamov's right hand down toward his waist every time Ibragamov lifts it as though to jab. No, another thing that's uh, glaring early in this fight is how often Klitschko winds up stepping on Ibragamov's front foot, which happens when an orthodox fighter fights a southpaw fighter, but it's happening so frequently, oh, oh, it looks oh, oh, intentional. Not, and you wonder down. if Ibragamov will focus more on the reality of trying to get his front foot outside of Klitschko's front foot, which he was able to do there. It's the only way to successfully create punching angles. And plus, you have a style clash here as well. You got two different styles, and obviously one's a southpaw. So th this first round is just a tester for both of them. First real solid land that he punch is a body shot at the waistline for Sultan Ibragamov. Lennox Max mentioned that uh, uh, Vladimir Klitschko is seeking what amounts in effect to your identity. He has the same trainer you had in the latter half of your career, Emmanuel Stewart. Like you, he's a tall, conventional fighter who tries to set up right hands behind this very good jab. What's the biggest difference between Vladimir and you? Ah, uh, what's the biggest difference? <laughs> uh, I, I would say I've got more athletic athleticism in it. <laughs> you, you bent at the waist more. You weren't as mechanical yeah, as Yeah, I, I was more relaxed than him. And, uh, you know, right now he looks a bit tight, but, you know, this comes with experience. I think he's just taking his time right now and showing a lot of poise and a lot of patience. And I, uh, I also think you had a terrific uppercut, and it's a punch that he uses only sparingly. Most of his well, game, jab, straight right hand, and the left hook. I haven't seen Klitschko's uppercut yet, but I've, I've seen his right hand and his left hook and his jab, and they're great. Look, one thing that he's doing is this. He's coming down on your jab real hard. Faint and come back with the hook. And throw the straight left to the body and work your way up. 
know you're in position because he's watching the right, watching the right. Just keep on working and keep banging him with the left hand, banging the left hand. And when he comes in, you go back. Check him with That's all. So that's, just keep working. Perfect. He's starting to get a little uncomfortable. That's all we want. It's real slow. Good round. In his most recent performance in Madison Square Garden last year in November of 2006, Vladimir Klitschko took a few rounds really to get going. He seemed to be in a bit of a walkabout before he woke up in the fifth round and started smashing Calvin Brock with right hands. And you heard Emmanuel Stewart say, real slow. Take your time. So obviously they're in no hurry to try to put an imprint on Ibrahimov. Well, what? And Manny, Manny doesn't want Klitschko to really go after him too tough to make Ibrahimov make him look bad. He wants to really figure him out first, go behind the jab and back him up and land a good right and left hook. You heard Jeff Mayweather, member of the famous Mayweather clan, the quiet brother you might call him, since he's so much less visible than his brother Roger, who trains Floyd, or his brother Floyd, who began training Floyd and trains Oscar De La Hoya. You heard Jeff say, faint him. That's what you need to do when he's trying to knock down the jab like that. I haven't seen Ibrahimov try to faint. Not yet. It's difficult. Fisco's got a long, a long reach and he's got a long stance right now. And anytime he steps in with that jab, it's a long jab, long, quick jab. By the time he's take that jab back out, Ibrahimov is trying to return the punch, but Klitschko's not there. Klitschko beginning to land his jab with regularity. And, and I mean, land it flush on Ibrahimov's chin. That's a mark of that big reach advantage for the wingspan of Vladimir Klitschko. Not that Klitschko is invincible. He's lost three times. Um, but to give you an idea of the class of fighter Klitschko is, both these guys have fought Ray Austin. Ibrahimov fought him to a draw, and against Klitschko, it was a ridiculous mismatch. Klitschko was so much better than Austin. Klitschko is starting to land that hard left jab this round with regularity. If you notice, that jab's coming over Ibrahimov's right hand. And, and that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to brag him off to bring up that right hand. He wants to knock it down and come straight over it with that jab. When the comparison uh, of what they did against Austin is brought up, Ibrahimov's people are quick to point out that he's since then changed trainers to Jeff Mayweather, who is in effect teaching him a new style as a guerrilla fighter rather than a face-first destroyer. And also that Austin was in shape, motivated, really working to try to beat Sultan Ibrahimov, and they say, oh, he obviously went in and simply laid down against Vladimir Klitschko. He laid down after he got caught with a left hook. Two of them. Yeah. Round two looks only slightly different than round one. The most significant variation is Vladimir Klitschko beginning to unfurl his jab and land it with regularity. Ibrahimov finally throws an overhand right and lands it on Klitschko's shoulder. Slowly breaking up apart, slowly, slowly. Perfect. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stay tuned for Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed, which offers an in-depth look at one of the most influential sports figures in our country's history. The Tennessee Volunteers have long been a basketball powerhouse in the women's game. Now behind colorful coach Bruce Pearl, the men's program is also a mainstay atop the rankings. Find out what's behind Pearl's success on the next Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, premiering Monday night, March 10. Bring that right hand up. Bring that right hand up, knock it down, shoot over. Can I say something, Jeff? Yeah. When you, when you throw left, mm -hmm. come back with right hook, okay? okay? But keep your right hand up, okay? All right, second All right Jeff. Go. A little more head movement. CompuBox numbers through round two. Vladimir Klitschko, 17 out of 36. And Sultan Ibrahimov, 13 out of 53. All of the 17 punches with which Klitschko has connected so far are jabs. And there's another thudding jab to begin round three. Seems like Sultan's trying to find some way in. You notice he's not really moving around too much. He's just staying out of distance of Klitschko's punches and circling. He's not catching, he's not catching himself on the ropes. 
So he's just waiting, biding his, his time, trying to figure out where can he throw a punch to get through to Vladimir Klitschko. Sultan Ibrahimov's strategy coming into this fight is to move around, try to box well enough to win some rounds, and try to hurt Klitschko with something big at some point, and once he gets Klitschko hurt, jump on him. The thinking is that Klitschko becomes unraveled when faced with a guy who's going to take advantage of the opportunities that come up at times as a result of Klitschko's fragile chin, or at least the perception of his fragile chin. But the guys who knocked Klitschko out, notably Lehman Brewster and Corey Sanders, were legitimate big punchers. And Sultan Ibrahimov is not judged by experts to be that kind of fighter. Which isn't to say that he couldn't set something up with footwork and guile. So far, though, he hasn't found an angle for getting away from Klitschko's jab. Well, you know, I'm sure Emmanuel's going to tell him in the corner that he needs to throw a double jab because the one jab is, is working so well, he might as well throw two. But right now he's electing to throw a jab real fast and, and maybe get out because he feels Sultan's going to come back with a combination. Should we see it as unusual, Lennox, that Vladimir is able to be this effective with his jab against a southpaw, or is it a function of the big size and reach advantage? No, it's a function of his size and reach advantage. He has to go after Ibrahimov behind a left jab. Once he lands that left jab and lands it a whole heap of times, then the right hand's going to follow. Then any combination after that can follow, but he has to start everything off with the jab. Why isn't he following with the right hand, considering how frequently the jab is now landing, Lennox? Yeah, I mean, he's going to, I'm sure Emmanuel's going to tell him to start throwing the right hand, but right now he wants to uh, get Abragamov interested in his left jab for, for first, and then allow him to watch out for his right hand, which will come. Abragamov's most aggressive rush of the fight ended in a semi-clinch, and then Klitschko sort of threw him away and went back to standing at a distance and throwing the jab. Now he gets Bragamov into a corner, lands two more jabs. Ibragamov tries a left, but Klitschko easily blocks it. See, Ibragamov's so close to the, to the ring rope that all Klitschko has to do is throw a double jab, and he, that, that puts him right against the ropes, and then he can throw any combination he wants. Ibragamov is not going anywhere because the ropes is holding him. Ibragamov got in a body shot toward the end of the round, but looks weary already as he goes to his corner after round three. He's in a lot of force. No. I need to start. I need the head up a little more, a little more head movement. Mm -hmm. he's, starting, he's starting to find with the jab a little more, so we need, to, we need some head movement. Change anything. The jab is working beautiful. And after a while, you'll see, but this is about the fourth round coming up. I said after the fourth round, he's going to be tired. Because now he cannot get on the inside, and the jab, he cannot get away from the jab. So when the missile comes, he'll never see it. Yeah. 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 box numbers through three rounds. Vladimir Klitschko's landed 34 punches. Every single one of them has finished dead. He's only three, thrown three punches that CompuBox judged to be power shots. Power shots are anything other than a jab. And Harold, how do you have it so far? <laughs> okay, Jim, two rounds to one. 29, 28, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, the first round, I get to suck a bring him up. When, you know, when I played patty cake and a bring him up landed a couple of right jams, Vladimir didn't do much. But rounds two and three was all Vladimir with that left jab. Two rounds to one, Klitschko. Now in round four, Klitschko has gone back to the tactic of knocking Ibragamov's jab down with his left hand. Ibragamov here, Jim, looks to me like he's getting a little desperate. And um, that's good for Klitschko, I suppose, but a desperate fighter is also a dangerous fighter, and he seemed to land a couple of good shots not long ago, a few moments ago. Yeah, when you say desperate, he wants to land the shot. He wants to get in there and, and land the punch and test Klitschko's chin because everybody's dreamt about his glass chin, so they want to hit it. I think Abragamov knows he has to change something. something. He has to do something dramatically different here because he's being systematically taken apart by the Klitschko jab. Yeah, right. he's simply going to get engulfed by jabs unless he can find a way to tactically change the fight. And he's trying to do it with sheer aggression and footwork in this round. 
And, and that's how, that's the kind of idea that Klitschko is trying to erase from people's minds, the idea that they can simply impose their will on him physically when things aren't going the way, as Brewster did, as Corey Sanders did. And again, it's one thing if a big puncher like Brewster or Sanders gets a shot at your jaw. It remains to be seen whether Ibragamov can do something about it if he gets that opportunity. And Jeff lands again. This guy has to watch out as well because his chin's a bit high. And uh, when your chin's a bit high and your right hand's a bit down, sometimes the shot gets by. That's what happened to me in South Africa. I thought I had the punch blocked, but it got through. And if you notice when Klitschko throws that jab, that right hand is hanging a little bit low. Needs to bring it up just a little bit more. You very definitely did not block Hasim Rahman's <laughs> right hand in South Africa. I thought I did, but, you know. <laughs> Of course, in the rematch, Lennox landed maybe the hardest punch ever landed in the history of boxing on Hassim Rahman to take back the title. Uh, Klitschko's got a good straight right hand. He has barely used it this fight. I cannot recall him once landing a good one or even throwing one. Yeah, I mean, if you would watch him, you would, you would, you would think that his right hand's hurting him or something. On the undercard, a popular Irish middleweight, John Duddy. Duddy who fights here in the New York area and has become a mainstay for ticket sales here at Madison Square Garden, had a fight which served as a possible stepping stone toward an anticipated matchup with middleweight champion Kelly Pavlik. And though Duddy was ripped in the early rounds and actually sustained a massive cut over his left eye, he was able to assert control through the middle rounds and ultimately wear his lesser-known opponent down en route to a majority decision. One judge saw the fight even. The other two judges both had the 10-round fight, 98-92 for John Duddy. It is expected that perhaps Duddy will meet Kelly Pavlik on June 7, perhaps in this very building. No deal is in place at this time, but it's one of the various matchups to which Max Kellerman referred earlier when he said there are a lot of possibilities on the table for Pavlik in the wake of his second win over Jermaine Taylor. Hopefully that won't be one of them, but it looks like it will be, Jim. Money talks. And Duddy has a following, regardless of whether he is genuinely a high-quality fighter. Round five of a scheduled 12 for Vladimir Klitschko, who is so far all jabs against Sultan Ibrahimov of Russia. Bragamov sharp and quick with that left hand. Partial contact at best. To say Klitschko is being cautious in approaching this is understatement. And the crowd begins to express its desire for the heavyweight championship aspirant to actually throw a right hand. Well, he needs to throw a couple double jabs and even a combination really test Ibragamov right now. But uh, he's, you know, he's content right now throwing one jab at a time. It's quite possible that no conventional fighter in the history of the sport has ever gone this many rounds against the southpaw without throwing a single straight right hand. It's amazing, really. There, there's one, and there it lands. Goes. And it lands, and the crowd likes that. And Ibragamov drops his hands as if to say, oh, yeah, you really knocked me cold. But Klitschko doesn't fall for it. You see a big six foot six, well muscled fighter like Klitschko. He's the more skilled of the two fighters, and fans like to, would like to see a little more aggression. Uh, Klitschko's not that kind of fighter. He scores knockouts, but he's measured in his approach. Let's focus on something he's doing very well, which is the jab. Jim, Joe Lewis, Sonny Liston, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, and Lennox Lewis. I mean, these are the greatest heavyweight jabbers of all time. Klitschko's jab seems to me to be in that class. He's uh, able to dominate top heavyweight opponents with it. Well, he's, he's got a powerful jab. When he steps into his jab, his whole power is behind it. And uh, anybody that gets hit by one jab feels it because th there's a lot of power behind it. He's got 250 pounds behind that jab. So he can actually knock out a person with a jab. Imagine if he throws a double jab. 
Well, the crowd may be impatient for Klitschko to be more aggressive and try to create more excitement, but his trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, has made abundantly clear between rounds that he wants Vladimir to do exactly what he's doing. Well, he's staying, he's staying to the game plan. What, he, what I feel he needs to do is even throw some combinations in there. Test the Bragamoff. Test him with that hook. Test him with that uppercut. After studying tape of Ibrahimov, Stewart declared him the best opponent Vladimir has ever faced. When asked for a prediction, he said that Klitschko would knock him out. And Klitschko hasn't even thrown a hook yet. Yeah, it's coming. I can see he's getting tired, and you can feel the distance now. The right is coming now. You move him into the corners now. Start moving him right to the corners where you want him. Bring him right to the ropes. And get, that's what you're doing. When you're leaning in and getting close in, and then shoot him right inside here. Because you're getting close to him now, but pushing him, take him to the corner. Put more pressure on him now. You let him have too much of a holiday. We start pressure more and more on that. Pick it up a little bit more. Very, very, very that way. Good rider, big, big rifle. Right very good. You feel good. Brittany, Brittany, come on. Couple of times. Come on. Couple of times. Come on. Come on. A quiet Jeff Mayweather allowing Miguel Diaz to do the talking in Ibrahimov's corner. Nothing tactical offered there. Total punches average per round so far, according to CompuBox count. Klitschko, 11 out of 23 in his average rounds. Ibrahimov, 7 out of 28. The heavyweight average is 46 punches thrown per round, and we've seen many situations in which Klitschko has thrown many more punches than that. But of course, when he did it against Lehman Brewster, he ultimately ran out of gas. So maybe the goal is simply to conserve energy. I think people see Klitschko's style, and they think it's confirmation of what we've seen in certain fights, that maybe he's a little wary, or Emmanuel's a little wary of him taking punches, afraid of you know, the potential reaction that he'll get hurt and maybe stopped. Um, even if that's the case, kind of worst case scenario analysis, then and then his approach is a smart one. A measured approach where he systematically breaks his opponent down, studies him with the jab, breaks him down, and then opens up later in the fight. It has worked for him in recent fights. Well, if the goal is to win the fight, then certainly that could be the case. If the goal is to be a colorful, dramatic, galvanizing figure for heavyweight boxing, then certainly the demand is to do otherwise besides this. Indeed. And I think I think is is the fact of, you know, he's doing it in a measured way, controlled, controlled aggression, and he's controlling the fight. He's definitely winning the fight. There's no problem. But uh you know, I, I, would I would love to see an, a right hand in there and a, and a hook in there. Well, after he knocked Brock out in the seventh round, flipping him onto his belly with a perfect right hand, then he didn't get criticized very much for the desultory performance in the early rounds of that fight. And surely, if he manages to up in the Bragamoff similarly, then the same thing will take place. Knockouts speak for themselves when they take place. And Klitschko generally knocks out his opponents in the last seven years only sam peter has gone the distance let me tell you when Klitschko throws that left jab there's so much power coming behind it you can tell by when the sweat comes off the of bragamoff's head vladimir's looking for his 50th victory in the ring tonight his record of 49 and 3 includes 44 knockouts See, uh, Manny told him to set a couple traps, put him in the corner, and, and, and then take advantage of him. But he's putting him in the corner, but allowing him to get out. And waiting for him. When you wait for a fighter, you're giving him a chance to come and, and create an offense against you. That's what Abragamov just did. Klitschko's goes waiting, throwing one jab at a time. Abragamov said, okay, let me go in there and throw a combination. And it, he landed a right hook, did it again, and Klitschko held moments ago. The story of the fight has been Vladimir Klitschko's left jab. Let's take a look at several of those jab connects. And here it seems like he's just waiting for that opportunity. Steps in there with a left jab using that reach. 
throwing one jab. Another one jab, very accurate, scoring, catching him on the chin. And here we see a double jab. This is what I want to see a little bit more of, double, j double jab right hand. Because the double jab set up a right hand, which has been rare for Klitschko so far in the fight. Okay. Okay. Power shots Let's in round six by CompuBox count. Let's go one out of five power punches landed. Seven out of 15 jabs. Ibragimov given credit by CompuBox in round six for landing 10 power shots. That's because he's focusing now on the right hook and trying to land that rather than his jab. Round seven begins. Harold, how do you have it through six? I, I, Jim, I gotta tell you, I thought, I thought Sander Bragimov did it in the round six to win the round. Four rounds to two, 58. 56, Vladimir Klitschko. I mean, if Rackabow gets the first round because he just landed a few more shots, and he wins that sixth round because he tried to make a fight of it. But other than that, it's been Vladimir's left jab absolutely dominating the fight. Four to two, Klitschko. Good left hook by Klitschko there as Ibragimov was rushing in, and Vladimir simply popped him with the left hook to move him out of the way. And that's, Early that's called a, a check left hook. That's the, it was like the check left hook that Floyd Mayweather used to knock out Ricky Hatton, as right. a matter of fact. You know, I don't want to, um, I'm not sitting here scoring the fight in, an, in a way where I'm just watching the fight to score it, so I'm not going to dispute Harold's card. You may be right. Uh, I think it's a shutout for Klitschko. Uh, the most interesting thing to me about this fight so far is, Jim, I only remember two right hands thrown by Klitschko. They both, three, three now. They both land, all three of them landed. Well, you know, Bragimov just laid there for that right hand. He didn't move his head, so he was a, a victim for that right hand. Well, he doesn't move his head in the face of the jab either. That's the reason that Klitschko is able to land it with such thudding regularity. And I agree with you, Max. Shutout scorecards at this point wouldn't surprise me at all. You know, it doesn't seem like Ibragimov's trying to score points in there, really. He's just waiting for that one opportunity where he can take advantage of Klitschko and catch him with a, a good left hook or right hook on the chin and then take advantage of him even more. He might have had a different thought about winning rounds earlier in the fight, and Klitschko may have talked him out of it with the regularity of his jab at this point. Yeah, well, now he's, now he's looking for that big shot. Now he's looking to to be Lehman Brewster and land something big that turns it all around as Klitschko tires from the constant effort. So far, he's been Lehman Brewster in the rematch, Jim. Eating jabs. Yeah. It, interestingly, now Klitschko in this round, though he hasn't exactly thrown caution to the wind, has thrown more right hands than I counted in the entire fight until this round. So maybe this is phase two of the plan. the plan, yeah. The plan, exactly. See, when, when Klitschko's got him against the ropes, he's got to throw a combination because, you know, Bragamoff's back is against the ropes. He can't go anywhere. He doesn't have to worry about a Bragamoff moving or making him look bad because he's against the ropes. Right there again, he's against the ropes. Double jab, right hand. And he could throw any combination there. The Bragamoff isn't going anywhere. Listening to the crowd, and judging their growing impatience as they wait for the towering Klitschko to knock out Ibragimov, I'm reminded of your fight in Connecticut years ago against Selko Mavrovic of Croatia. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was a tough cookie. He trained for two years for me. And how long did you train for him, is the question. <laughs> Happy days? You gotta get your rhythm. Get a little bounce. Get a little bounce so you can get your rhythm, so you can start seeing everything, timing everything. When you expect, and, then, and then you need to go tell him right away. It's fine, man. Okay, we're going to go and step it on up now. Because it's getting to be almost like a Brock fight to some degree now. And here's uh, Klitschko unveiling his right hand, straight right hand. Abragamov was right there for it, didn't move, just stay, standing in one, in one position, looking at the punch, accepting it. And you see the ease of that and see how it followed Klitschko's tactic of knocking down Ibragimov's right hand before he could get off the jab. And you wonder, why wasn't he doing that in round one when it seems as though it would have been just as easy? CompuBox numbers through seven. Klitschko 75 out of 162. 68 of those connects are jabs.
and 53 out of 185 for Ibrahimov. And you heard Emmanuel Stewart say between rounds, now it's getting to be like the Brock fight. We have to assume that means eventually more right hands. I, I took it to mean um, that Emmanuel thinks that there are kind of mixed reviews on Klitschko so far in terms of his ability to dominate in an entertaining way. But maybe he did mean it that way, Jim, or maybe both. That right hand was the hardest blow of the fight. Dragunov tried to answer immediately, but Klitschko's confidence with the right hand is rising. That was a check left hook that was more like a throw, and consequently, he does not get credit for a knockdown. It's con Klitschko's confidence is rising, and Abragamov is falling. A perfect correlation. Straight right hand lands again, and that one hurt Abragamov. His foot movement will tell you that. Let me tell you, when Klitschko throws that right hand, it's so straight, and it's right down the line. It's, not, a, it's not, a beautiful not, weapon. It's just he's underutilizing this it. This is the time right now to step step it up. And he is, step, he is stepping Wait. it up. No he's push. throwing a lot step more back. right hands. And he wants to take Abragamov out. I wonder if he's shown Abragamov this much respect because he knows that Abragamov is a Russian with a legitimate amateur pedigree, and he respects that so much that he needs to be careful about it. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, you could say he doesn't want to take any extra chances. He's winning the fight quite comfortably with the jab, so he, he may be thinking, why take any extra chances? Let Abragamov get a little tired before he starts throwing that right hand. A sudden flurry of power punches from Klitschko, and again, the right hand landed. His accuracy with both the jab and the right hand, unimpeachable. You can also see maybe where Klitschko's a bit cautious because whenever he opens up and hurts Ibragamov, Ibragamov's reaction is fight, not flight. Ibragamov landed two right hooks, slinging them over the top and both connected. Now that one lands on Klitschko's shoulder or back. Opportunity to throw that right hand. Most dominant round so far for Vladimir Klitschko. A miss like that, that's when he takes a holiday. You should go right back, bing, bing, right back right away on it. You got to step it up a little bit more on him. You let him miss, and then he gets out of position, and then you let him get back in position. After he finishes, go to him right away and put some pressure. You want to take this out this one? You got to put. And also, I need you to drop under them shots. He's a big man. He's going to be throwing them up high. Drop under. Come back. And then one shot to the body. Here, work your way up. That's what we got to do. We got to work our way up. And here's one of uh, Fisco's straight right hand. Boom. Right on the chin. Check it out. Check it out. Get the stool. Okay, let's go, guys. See, when you see Ibragimov throw in those overhand lefts they're they're really roundhouses they're not straight punches and most guys can oh most pretty guys can see him coming yeah pretty easy to see him coming but those straight punches you can't see coming that could have been ruled a knockdown i thought the ropes kept the off up absolutely right jim should have been a knockdown Referee Wayne Kelly did not credit Klitschko with a knockdown but to my eyes should have gotten credit for one bit that was a double right hand, and both of them landed flush. See, Bregamov needs to do something else. Right now, everybody can tell what he's trying to do right now. He's waiting for Klitschko, then he's trying to come around with that right, right hook, and then maybe a left hook. 
That's the only two punches I've seen Ibrahimov throw in this fight. He needs to mix up his punches, throw a lot of different punches in there. Double jab would help. Ibrahimov tried to sling Klitschko out of bounds with many members of the Super Bowl champion New York Giants in attendance and perhaps appreciating the tackling form. See, this is a good opportunity for Klitschko to throw a jab and then a left hook after that because Abragamov is trying to block it with his right hand. Well, you mentioned the New York Giants, Jim. The way they won the Super Bowl, it was inspirational. The, the, the level of desire and, and um, the effort was obvious. Klitschko is not that kind of a fighter. He's a clinical kind of fighter. Well, he's a man that studies a lot of tape, so he's watched Abragamov a whole leap of times. Well, as one of the only two heavyweight champions in history or heavyweight titleists in history with a PhD, right, break, break, you wouldn't break, break. expect otherwise. And of course, down. the other okay. heavyweight titleist with a PhD was his older brother, Vitaly. I asked Vladimir in our meeting yesterday, do you experience more and more and more recognition on American streets as the heavyweight champion? <laughs> and he said, well, yeah, but... Quite often, it's somebody saying, Vitaly, we really love you. <laughs> he was honest about that. A break, break. Vitaly Klitschko no punch, still planning back. at some point to come back to the ah. ring, although that plan has been upended now three or four times by training injuries. We can't say it There's anymore. a look you at Vitaly as he leads got to into Vladimir's corner. You have to this guy, every time he throws a punch and he gets back out, he's tired, go back to him right away. That's when he's weak. But you let him regroup and get his energy back again. Every time you do that, just get more aggressive. But our hands need to stay up. Side to side movement. Let's back him up a little bit. And here's Klitschko hitting the brag him off with the right hand and Abragamov going back into the ropes. And yes, the ropes did hold him up. If the ropes wasn't there, he would have been flat on his butt. Or in the crowd. So that should have been called a knockdown. But Vladimir Klitschko would hardly seem at this point to need the scoring point. Well, you know, it would have been a knockdown if his gloves would have touched the canvas. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim. Abraham. Seven rounds to two, 88, 83, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, as far as the knockdown goes, there's no question that something bring about was being held up by the ropes, but it's the referee's call. I, I mean, the guy went into the ropes. Wayne Kelly could have called it a knockdown, saying that a bring about was being held up by those ropes, but Wayne chose not to. Interestingly enough, Sultan came back. I mean, he really didn't look hurt. He got knocked into the ropes early in the round, but he did come back. So therefore, I didn't call it a 10-8 round. I called it a 10-9 round. Seven rounds to two. Vladimir Klitschko. See, right now, all I see is that Ibragamov is finding a very difficult time to get inside of Klitschko. And anytime he tries to get inside, Klitschko holds him or pushes him to the side. Or Ibragamov gets hit with a jab. It's a pretty quiet corner over there for Ibragamov. And now this tackle succeeds in bringing Klitschko to the canvas. Lennox is at this point, Sultan Ibragamov fighting to survive. I wouldn't say he's fighting to survive because he's not getting hit with a lot of punches. If you look at his face, his face isn't red. He hasn't got hit with a punch where we could say, oh, he's really hurt. But he's, he's, he's finding it a difficult time. Obviously, style is a big factor in this fight. And the fact that he's not able to do what he wants to do in there. It's not an easy job as maybe a lot of guys may think it is when they watch clips go from the outside. All of a sudden, when they're inside with him, is, you know, his size, his strength, his speed. And that's what they have to contend with at the moment. Well, ever since he came a cropper against Sanders, every Klitschko opponent to whom we've spoken has been certain and has expressed the certainty that he's going to knock him out. Ragimov is now really trying to turn it into a back alley kind of mugging. 
trying to wrestle Klitschko. You saw him take Klitschko down earlier with a wrestling move. There he tried to wrestle Wait, Klitschko. No and and Vladimir back. does give you the sense that if were he to have been hit with as many punches as Dragomov so far, maybe he still wouldn't be there. And his opponents pick up on that sense. But um, while they're trying to get inside, you know, he's doing most of the boxing and scoring and hurting. And that's what's happened so far this fight. Good quick left hook inside by Klitschko as Ibragimov tried to land the left over the top. Vladimir Klitschko showed you two no very deft, quick left hooks oh, in that back. sequence. And Klitschko's defense in this fight has been good because, you know, obviously Ibragimov has been trying to hit him with the right hook and the left hook, but hasn't succeeded yet. Crowd won't give him credit for the defense. That's not what they came to see. But Two you, rounds you, to go after this one. You have to notice the defense, though, because he hasn't been hit yet. Water, water, water. Okay, turn. Right, left. That way you're going to get out of balance. If you just start to get in close and let the shots go, you hit him. But it's going to be a real ugly fight because you're not throwing your punches. Well, you to all you got to do is throw punches. You're getting this 11th round. You should never be going 12 rounds with him. But you got to hit him with your right hand after you don't throw your... And you, here we see uh, the two of them mixing it up in the, in the center of the ring. It looks like a football match, but uh, they wind up on the canvas, both of them. Yeah, but the credit for the tackle goes to Ibragimov. <laughs> yes, it does. So you heard Emmanuel Stewart say you should never be going 12 rounds with this guy. That may qualify as Emmanuel's most dissatisfied expression so far in the fight. Big margin for Vladimir Klitschko on Harold Letterman's scorecard. Copy box numbers in 10 found Klitschko landing 13 punches. Break, 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 eight of 20 power down, shots. Klitschko threw a good right hand there. What he did was knock down Ibragimov's uh, right, right hand and then came over the top with a, a, a right hand of his own. Again, something it would appear he should have been able to do throughout the fight. But it's been a selective, clinical, you might say cautious enterprise for Vladimir. And perhaps because he's winning rounds so easily. Why take a risk? Yeah, he, right now he's just disposing of all challenges and disposing of Ibragimov in, right. in, in a clinical way. He doesn't really, he's not really trying to take him out anymore, but if the opportunity presents itself, he will. And it's worth pointing out, Max Kellerman, that if Vladimir Klitschko were to take on another guy with a belt, Uzbekistan's Ruslan Shigaev, we might see something very much like this fight Almost categorically similar. Shigayev's a lot like uh, Bragamov, a little busier, but also a southpaw, a cute fighter. I think what Emmanuel's expressing in the corner, Emmanuel Stewart in the corner to Klitschko, right, no is the right. same dissatisfaction that some fans may have with Klitschko watching this fight. Yes, he's winning, but if he demanded a little more of himself, if he wasn't satisfied with what he was doing, but tried to push it a little more, he would score the knockout. He would be more spectacular. He would give us what we're looking for. Um, and I think Emmanuel in the corner is trying to impress that on uh, Vladimir. Don't be satisfied with what you're doing. You can take this guy out. Well, it's very important because, you know, right now he's got four minutes left in the fight. And if I was in there four minutes left, I would let it all hang out. And this is what he needs to do. He should let it all hang out. Let's see the best of you. Ragamov charges, Klitschko stops him in his tracks with a jab. I'm sure that Emmanuel on that night in Connecticut was suggesting to you that you ought to be able to knock out Zelko Mavrovich. Sometimes it's not as easy as it looks. No, but at least I tried. What? <laughs> I tried, man. The guy was moving all around the ring. Yeah, okay. That's what Vladimir's gonna say. I tried. The guy was moving all around the ring. <laughs> I tried to knock out Barney Rubble. He wouldn't stand still for me. Looks to me like against Maravich, uh, Lennox, you thought, nah, not gonna get this guy out of there tonight. I'll win on points. Let me tell you, I did hit him with some good shots, but he's got a good chin. Yeah. Hey, 
if Ragamov shakes his head as if to say, this is not the easiest way to make a living. It's not going to happen. Unless you knock him out good. The winner decision over this fight is not good at all. The guy's right here to be knocked out, but you can't knock him out if you won't throw the punch. And all you have to do wow. is you have so many opportunities and you just keep holding and holding and holding. Gruzivo. But you will have to try to knock him out, otherwise it's going to be bad. Get your hit down and go. Still, we got to be smart, Get down and go. We got to be smart. But we got to have it. We got to have it now. Leave, leave everything in. So now Emmanuel Stewart categorically expresses a priority that goes above and beyond just winning the fight. Yeah, and you've seen Klitschko look at Manny like, what? It's going to be bad? So I'm sure he's going to have a different demeanor coming out in this last round. You know, Emmanuel Stewart is a colleague of ours here on HBO as a broadcaster. Uh, but I think that's a very gutsy thing for a trainer to tell the number one heavyweight in the world when he's made, pitching a virtual shutout to go press for the knockout, which leaves him vulnerable. A guy who's been stopped three times, Klitschko, to be knocked out himself. Um, many trainers would not adopt that position that Emmanuel just took. But I think that's why a fighter hires a trainer like Emmanuel Stewart, is because he wants to be great and he wants somebody who knows the big picture. Right, and to motivate him. Different boxers have different ways to be motivated. This, by saying that to him, may motivate him. Oh, we need to go out there and knock him out. Well, we really do? So Klitschko's looking at himself. He, wa he wants to go in there and knock no him out. Punches. Manny wants him to knock him out because, obviously, because this guy shouldn't go 12 rounds with him. Sure, but with all the potential money out there for Vladimir, for his trainer to essentially say, obviously, he doesn't think it's a big risk, but right. to take more chances, to risk more by pressing for a knockout, and therefore jeopardizing, in a way, that future, is a gutsy move on Emmanuel's part. And... Um, you gotta, you gotta remember, Manny's in the ring, in the gym with him, watches him spar all the time. So Manny knows that there's a lot more in Vladimir Klitschko than he's showing here tonight. And also maybe more money in the future if he can excite people with a knockout. Well, that's right. another point. Emmanuel Stewart is in his 60s. He has another successful career now as a television broadcaster. Vladimir Klitschko may be his last legitimate heavyweight championship contender. He wants to get everything he can possibly get out of it. One minute to go. Still, the knockout doesn't materialize. And, you know, for me, I, I see Vladimir uh, Klitschko having a lot more skills, but there there's nobody really to bring it out in him. You know, for, for a fight like this, he's satisfied just winning on the jab, and he's winning just on the jab. His defense is great. Doesn't really need right. to throw his right hand. I would love to see him throw his right hand a bit more, but he doesn't need to. You, you're right. He's, this, this fight is a virtual shutout. You know, Lennox, sometimes Larry Holmes was criticized for winning on the jab. Sometimes you were. Um, you no, know, that happens. Some, there have been heavyweight champions and successful fighters who have had nights like this where they haven't looked bad. They've dominated with the jab, maybe not electrified everybody, but um, won and maybe electrified everyone another day. That's right. The ethic becomes win this one, look great the next time out. And if you didn't look great this time, they'll forget about it because just have another fight real soon and then forget about it. Virtual shutout. An apparent easy win for Vladimir Klitschko, barring some dramatic upset in the scoring. But Emmanuel Stewart expressed probably what was on the minds of many fans between the 11th and 12th rounds. Harold Letterman winds up giving 10 of the 12 rounds to Vladimir Klitschko, and as both Max Kellerman and I suggested during the fight, shutouts wouldn't be shocking in the scorecards we're about to listen to. On the other hand, maybe there's a judge who found three or four rounds to give to Ibrahimov. You just never know.
Sultan Ibrahimov has a cousin who is also a heavyweight fighter, Timur Ibrahimov. But it's abundantly clear over the course of the past two years which is the better of the Ibrahimovs. And this was to was to be the opportunity for him to move his career to the pinnacle tonight. He sought the fight against Vladimir Klitschko, was very happy to get it. And from the standpoint of winning and losing, it appears to have turned out to be one of those cases of be careful what you wish for. But you can imagine the degree to which New York sports sections and boxing writers may well rake Klitschko over the coals tomorrow for his caution. Nevertheless, if the scores are what we expect them to be, it would be the 50th win of his career. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, we go to the scorecards. Don Ackerman, 119-110. Chuck Jampa, 117-111. Steve Weisfeld, 118-110. All to the winner, and now the unified heavyweight champion of the world from Kiev, Ukraine, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Klitschko. So Vladimir Klitschko does indeed get the 50th win of his career, and for what it's worth, he now has two belts, not just one. Final CompuBox numbers in the easy Klitschko win. Landed 51 more punches, threw 32 more punches. Landed at a 43% connect rate. Bolstered by the fact that he, through most of the fight, was landing his jab about half the time. Jabs, 44% at the end for Klitschko. Connect percentage dropping in the last few rounds as Ibrahimov stayed farther and farther away. How far away? So far away that he landed only 16 of 137 jabs by CompuBox count. And now let's go to Max Kellerman in the ring with Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir, congratulations. You pitched a virtual shutout. Um, in the corner, Emmanuel seemed to think that you could have done more. How did you evaluate this performance? I want to say thank you very much for your support. I thought I'm gonna knock this guy out. It wasn't easy. I know you're not maybe satisfied, but I have to keep the belts and knock everybody else out. I will work hard and I will give my best. I want to say thank you very much for to New York to support your project, guys. Here in Bronx, we collect a lot of names, thousands of names on my unboxing rope. So the money, a good half a million dollars going to Bronx. Okay, it's a commendable that you were raising money for charity. Vladimir, let's focus on the fight uh, for now. Your jab was a thing of beauty. It was a dominant weapon. When you threw the right hand, it seemed to land to great effect. You hardly threw any right hands. Why not? I was throwing my hands, but I have to make sure that I will land them. If I will miss it, I will lose the balance, and with the southpaw, it's pretty difficult then to get back. That's the tactic which Ibrahimov has. He's a counter puncher. He tried to seem to uh, turn it into a, a brawl at a certain point, tackling you at one point, trying to rough you up. Were you aware that there was a change of strategy on his part? Were... I think they keep pretty much the same strategy. They were trying to change, but also I saw that he has, he has difficulties with the size. He used to handle it in his past fights very good with Jimmy McLean with um, Shannon Briggs and others. So he was trying his best. Okay, Vladimir, you are recognized universally as the number one heavyweight in the world, but not yet by everyone as the heavyweight champion of the world. Who do you think you need to fight to gain recognition as the heavyweight champion of the world? I think if uh, I will keep playing up the ring as I did it in the past few years, it's all common. I'm not looking for it, but it's come by itself. So I have to just work hard. That's it. Just beat one guy after another, and eventually the recognition will come? That's right, and as impressive as possible. Not over 12 rounds. Okay. Samuel Peter and Oleg Maskaev are meeting in a few weeks. The winner of that fight will be perceived by many as your top challenger. 
Do you perceive the winner of that fight as your top challenger? We had a dream to be champions at the same time with my older brother Vitaly, and I guess that he's gonna wait for a shot. I will just keep winning all other fights. So might we wind up in a situation where you and Vitaly are considered, in the best case scenario, according to you, the two best heavyweights in the world, and we'll, in that case, we would just have a two-headed heavyweight champion, and that's all. I think it's a business between two brothers, so I'll see how the cookie crumbles. We'll see. Congratulations, Vladimir. Thank you. Jim. Vladimir Klitschko was once very happy with the ambition of being heavyweight titleist at the same time as his brother. In the last couple of years, it seems increasingly to be a discomfort to him, though he will not say so. Uh, Lennox Lewis, did he take a step toward becoming the recognized heavyweight champion of the world, or would you say it's still balanced water from before? Well, you know, he did take a step because he's beaten the next best opponent uh, that they put in front of him. Now he has to go on and beat the rest of the guys that he hasn't fought yet, so the world can actually see who the best heavyweight in the world is right now. Uh, you know, each time he goes into the ring, he has to perform and show that he's the best, throwing combination, throwing jabs. Right now, in this fight, I only seen the jab. I didn't see the true uh, Vladimir Klitschko. I'm sure he's got a lot to uh, show the world, but we need to see it in the ring. He threw some terrific right hands, probably just not enough to satisfy the public. Max, a great question. You asked him about the possible matchup against the winner of Moskaya versus Peter. And Vladimir seemed to be saying, well, my brother Vitaly has the inside track on that, and if he gets there first, so be it. Uh, but that represents a possible enormous confusion to the boxing public if it turns out that way. Indeed. Um, you know, Vladimir dominated this fight with the jab, won it with the jab. Larry Holmes dominated title fights the same way, was sometimes criticized. So did Lennox Lewis, was sometimes criticized for it. And like Holmes and Lennox, um, maybe Vladimir doesn't have that one fight out there for him where at that moment everyone's going to on the same foot step forward and say, okay, this is now the heavyweight champion. However, at a certain point, the distinction between Vladimir Klitschko as the number one heavyweight in the world and as the heavyweight champion, Jim, becomes academic. It doesn't really matter at a certain point. What's the difference? Um, the lineage has been broken when Lennox retired. There's a vacancy. Someone is eventually going to ascend to that position. Should Vladimir beat Pavyekin, who seems to be the next opponent, and by the end of the year, say, beat the winner of Moskayev and Peter, at that point, there would be no one in their right minds who could possibly say that Vladimir Klitschko hadn't become the heavyweight champion of the world. And so let's hope that's his chosen trajectory. And, um, and maybe Vitaly can get injured once more in training, <laughs> clearing the way for a, 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 win, a Maske of Peter winner to fight Vladimir and clean up this mess. I think uh, the Vitaly injury is a very strong possibility based on what has happened before. And as I said before we left the table, for what it's worth, Vladimir Klitschko now has two of the four belts. If you think that's the criterion by which you ultimately determine who the champion is, so be it. You're entitled to that perception. Most of us here at ringside would probably say it has less to do with belts and more to do with impact. For what it's worth, whether he's the champion or not, he is still the central figure in the division. He has the best television contract. He commands the biggest sight fees. He is the fighter you want to fight if you want to make the most possible money. What else is there? It remains to be seen how many more steps Vladimir may have to climb to get to the rung he wants to be on. Meanwhile, if you have not missed our promotion, or if you have missed our promotion somehow, we remind you that immediately following this telecast, you'll have a chance to see the HBO film Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed. So if you missed any part of tonight's telecast, you can catch it again on HBO tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. or on HBO 2 at 4.30 p.m. Tonight's telecast will be rebroadcast a final time, also on HBO 2, Tuesday night at midnight. Next on HBO, as I said, stay tuned for Joe Lewis, America's Hero, Betrayed. And now for our entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying good night and thanks for being with us.
This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.